It's been a while, guys. It yeah. Is. Social distancing has prevented us from getting together. That's not true. We live together. Yeah. I'm just here. <laughs> He's just here. It's just been hard to uh, find time to do it. But we made it happen. Well, we made it happen, and here we are. Cue the whatever man. So, welcome back to the Whatever Man podcast, vlog, YouTube channel, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Whatever Man, episode five. So, how are we guys doing today? We're doing well. You know, we just had a couple of things happen, like the draft for the NFL. Sure as did. As awful as it kind of was watching Roger Goodell. Pronounce names or positions <laughs> and stay awake. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> he was just like, I want this to be over because <laughs> he had to do them all. Usually, they do like different people, like yeah, each round. Mm -hmm. But he did every single one of them. Maybe they got and he got booed too. so many times. There was one point where he was just <laughs> like, people got the <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, maybe <laughs> that would suck. Oh man, but we can talk about the draft. Yeah, we absolutely can. Uh, I. And please, with the Cowboys' selections, I think they definitely needed to get some defense. I think that, I mean, I'm happy that they picked up a backup QB in the draft, but, you know, they picked up Andy Dalton afterwards, and we'll talk about that a little later on. But I'm happy with CeeDee Lamb being the number one pick for us Cowboys, and we definitely need some weapons on offense to support uh, the offense that we already have. And we got a lot of defense too. We definitely need the defense there. Uh, we just we just got to figure out what's going on with Dak. We got to sign him. And if we don't, like we'll have Andy Dalton. What about you guys? How do you feel about your teams? Uh, before Justin goes, I just want to say, Bill Belichick must have been on crack that night. I Jesus was Christ! So mad. <laughs> Jesus he wasn't even present. <laughs> like, I was like, what? What? What are the Patriots there. doing? Uh, I'm pretty happy with all the picks that the Jets got. Um, we got that monster of a tank kid for offensive line. He's oh, yeah. literally a refrigerator, and he runs yep. uh, a 40 and 5-1. Does he so. keep things cool, too? Huh? Does he keep things chill? Yeah, as chill as Dak Prescott on the field. I mean, he said he's literally a refrigerator, so... Mm -hmm. That's your refrigerator running? I hate you <laughs> so much. That was bad, Justin. That's why I'm here. This is as bad as your Cowboys joke there, too, guy. <laughs> Anyways, what else? Um, we got we got good wide receivers, and we got good offensive tools. Uh, I'm sorry, defensive tools. Uh, according to a lot of the analysts on ESPN, um, what I really liked is that we ended up getting more picks by trading down. Um, so we were able to get more selections. And a lot of Jets fans, I was watching on social media, a lot of Jets fans were upset because we traded down. And the wide receiver that we ended up picking up, we thought he was going to be gone. Uh, Sim. Sims? can't remember how to pronounce his last name. But... Uh, on paper, he was supposed to be the best wide receiver in uh, the draft. So, who knows? What round did you pick him up on? The fourth round? We're going to find out right now. Right meow? We're going to find four. out right meow. I feel like, while I'm looking this up, there are so many picks by the Jets, and there's also so many picks by the Dolphins. Like, you guys just... The Dolphins had a lot of picks, but yes. they had a good draft, too. They had a great draft. They yeah. had basically a But the Dolphins team. have been in, like, last place forever. Yeah. They've been them and the Browns, just... Like, they had... The Dolphins had one good year when they went to the playoffs, and then they just got destroyed, I think, by the Steelers? So, I think it was. Yeah. They haven't done anything since when they used to be, like, arguably a dynasty back in the day. Yeah. Um, but they got two well. Yeah, Tua, yeah. But after, what's that guy? What's his name? He just passed away. Don Shula. Yeah, after he, he just mentioned his name too. <laughs> after he passed away, I mean, after he uh, left the team, like, they haven't done anything. They haven't done much of anything. I didn't grow up with watching Don Shula or anything, but that's sad. 
It is sad because he's a huge name. He was in the NFL. The, he led the only undefeated team. He had 347 wins, I want to say it was. He has the most wins, I know that. Oh, yeah, easily. Easily. Well, I'm having a hard time finding this guy. Nope, that's not because, well, the Jets have a million picks, but. <laughs> Denzel's Mims, sorry. Mims? Yeah, Mims. M I M S. M I M S. Yes. Yeah, I can't find him in here, so. <laughs> or I could have just oh, done this. Yeah, that's true. I could have just done it by team and <laughs> filtered by team. <laughs> but, you know. Oh, well, well, we found figure it out. Yeah, right? <laughs> well, for the Patriots, so like Manny said, <laughs> it was an interesting draft. I, I believe in Belichick because all this time he has been like, Decent, especially with the just mainly with the defensive side, like good at drafting. Offensive, questionable. But <laughs> <laughs> and I was watching that draft the first night, and I was excited to see what they were gonna do with the. I think it was the twenty second or twenty third pick. And then they traded it. And so I waited all that time up to mm -hmm. like eleven o'clock and, and traded. What? And then <laughs> they picked up a D two. Defensive back Kyle Duggar. Yeah, safety. Yeah, we'll see how he does, and you know, I'm sure there's a real more reason behind it. He'll learn good behind Devin McCourty. Mm hmm And because Devin McCourty is getting older, they um yeah they got a couple of second round picks from that. They were looking at Justin Jefferson, like apparently they should have picked him, but he got picked by Vikings <laughs> right before. I the pick before. I. I was like, yo, that his name's Justin. So like, what, what, <laughs> what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? <laughs> no, and then he gets picked by Spike. Pick up a D two safety. By Mr. <laughs> Mr. Um, Kirk Cousins. Mr. Kirk you like that? You like that? You like that? Uh, well, I mean, would you say you kind of have to believe in Bel Belichick as a as a Patriot? That's fan? what I. Yeah, and that's back to that. Like that's what I said. Like I had to believe because he has led, helped lead this team for so long. Yeah. And we also got. Um, some linebackers. We got a couple of tight ends to Devin Asiasi and Dalton Keene. I haven't really known much about Dalton Keene, but Asiasi, I heard, was pretty good as a tight end, especially yeah. since we lost Rob Kowski <laughs> after yeah, he won the 24-7 championship. He still the 24-7 championship. He still the 24-7 championship. He still <laughs> And he took it to Tampa Bay, <laughs> <laughs> which I find hilarious <laughs> and awesome. That all makes sense now. I don't know if it makes sense. <laughs> Would you say that they probably could have picked up Kyle Duggar or maybe some of the other picks in the second round later in the draft? Um, possibly. They they didn't have any second round picks. So, um, I don't know if later down the second round that anyone else would have picked them, but it was They didn't have any second round picks, you said? Yeah, because they traded it to the from the Chargers. I'm just so surprised you guys didn't draft uh, a quarterback. As yeah, and like back to that point. So I'm surprised. Like I was thinking, they might have drafted Jalen Hurts, but I th I think the Eagle like before that. But I mean, and before that, I thought they could have drafted Jordan Love. And that smart. <laughs> that's what they could have done with that pick. And I thought that was I think in the last podcast I said like I think they could draft Jordan Love. I can't believe you guys didn't sign Andy Dalton. Yeah, that been smart. <laughs> as like a backup plan, yeah. Or no, like as a starting I plan. I would have started him over Jared, Jared Stidham. Stidham. <laughs> yeah, but Jared fucking Stidham. <laughs> but now that we know that's what happened, they're going with Jared Stidham. But my, my, my question to you is, you said that they didn't have any second round picks. Yeah, they didn't. The Patriots didn't have any second round and picks. And then he traded with the Chargers. And that's why the Chargers got To get got back into pick. the second round? To get into the second round. Got it. So they got, got the it, two got it, picks. Got it. I thought you said they didn't have any second-round picks at all. And I was like, but that's how they picked up Kyle Duggar in the yeah, second trade, round. I got so confused. Good. I just wanted clarity around that. <laughs> but uh, Jared Stidham. Jared Stidham is going to be the guy. He is, in capital letters, the guy. The according guy. According to this article. I'm so, right now. Jared Stidham to be the guy, <laughs> in capital letters, for the foreseeable oh, wow. future. <laughs> so you guys didn't have any first round picks, but you had two second round picks. We had one first round pick, Mediocre. and then we traded it mm -hmm. to the Chargers. Oh, all right. Because I was gonna say it's not showing it here. Yeah, because the Chargers ended up in that. Yeah. You got two tight ends mm -hmm. for offense. You got a guard. 
os- offensive tackle and a center for your last your last pick. Dude, we also got a kicker apparently. No more Goskowski. No more Goskowski. But what's funny is now he's like under some shit <laughs> because what? he has a tattoo, a controversial tattoo. Mm-hmm. It's exactly what you need right now. <laughs> yeah. What? That apparently has to do with white supremacy. Oh, God. What? And he's, so from what I've heard, he said that he Which didn't realize. Is this? Um, Justin Rowasser? Oh, I see I him here. Punt? Yeah. Wait, the, he, Justin something or other has the tattoo or Goskowski? Yeah, Justin. Oh, okay. I was about to say, I was like, Goskowski. <laughs> I thought, <laughs> you know, so much highly of you, but he didn't have the tattoo. I was like, I supported you in fantasy football for years. I miss you, Oscar. <laughs> and uh, man. if anything, he supported you. I picked him <laughs> all the time, and he supported my team. There you go. That's better. But yeah, so he yeah. said that he didn't know that was something that had to do with white supremacy. He, had, he got it for us like a military thing. Ooh. Don't know. It's mm. one of the top search mm. things. Yeah. Let's see, let's see, let's see. You look up the tattoo? Yeah, I'm trying to. They ended up getting someone named Justin, though. That's what matters to you. That's what matters. <laughs> I don't know if there's a single set. But dude, you guys, picked them, you guys picked him in the fifth round? You got him from the the Raiders. Yeah. Picked him oh, a kicker. Yeah, in, the fifth. in the fifth round. We did yeah. take some undrafted quarterbacks. Though. I'm pretty sure that Bilicek's dog did some of the picks for him. Probably. You know? <laughs> Just camera but, footage proofing. Like I said, I'm as a Patriots fan, I have to believe in Belichick. So, I don't think they're going to be a Super like, going to make it into a Super Bowl. And usually... They definitely won't make like, it into a Super Bowl. And usually, and I'm no bias in anything, but I'm like, Patriots are the favorite to go. The Patriots are going to go, like, each year. And then... Like, um, but this year, I just don't see. I would have never guessed. The heck? He's very patriotic, I, I according so. according to his, uh, his tattoos with the American flag and liberty or death. Yeah, he said it was a misunderstanding. He also has... Looks like the uh, pyramid with the eye. Yeah. Illuminati? Yeah. No. No, Illuminati's something different. Yeah, the Illuminati is facing up. This is facing oh, down. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But, yeah, you can put a picture. You can edit that into it. <laughs> Boop! Somewhere <laughs> But, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that's what it is. I'm just like, uh, whatever. According, if it is, then, you know, shame on him. According to what it says there, he said he never knew that that's what it meant. But at the same time, I'm like... It doesn't seem like a tattoo that you look in a book and like, oh, that looks cool. I want to get that on me. And he's playing off as so, an airhead. <laughs> he so could I, be. I feel like he's he that. might be playing it off as in like, oh, you know what? That that was a mistake. So I'm gonna get a hit because he says he's gonna get it covered up. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're gonna be in the NFL and it's a problem in the NFL. Like you, go, you're gonna get it covered up. You're gonna ask. If you want to play? Yeah, for real. They're only allow you to be racist in the dark. That's sports. Just like uh, that <laughs> Clippers. Um, I'm implying that there's racists in the NFL. They're just not allowed to be open about it. Oh, yeah. Well, one guy was open about it, and then he was playing for the Dolphins. What was his name? Oh. Um, sort of an R, Rich something, I think. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> he got kicked off Incognito? the team. Incognito, yeah. He got kicked off the team real quick. He's still playing, though. Yeah, he's yeah, still playing. He's no, still that, that wasn't him. He was the one. He got... Um, he got traded because of the uh, what he was doing to rookies. He was um, what's that word that they use? Um, when they they give rookies a hard time. Well, Richie Incognito accused of racial slurs. Oh well, there you go. I was wrong. <laughs> so. You Maybe he it. did both. Points for me. You heard it here, America. <laughs> mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah, he's still playing. Yeah, and I was pitch. wrong earlier. The Jets didn't pick uh, Denzel Mims in the fourth round. I was way off. Second Picked him in the round. second round. Yeah. He was the 59th pick overall. And according to CBS Sports, he was our best pick of the entire draft. 
Yeah. Him. <laughs> All the picks that you made. Him and cornerback Bryce Hall. Dude, they were tied him. for both A's. Then safety Ashton Davis at an A-. minus. Um, we got a D for uh, drafting uh, James Morgan. I don't know why we drafted a quarterback, but... <laughs> I, it's better than the backup that we had, because honestly, I hate the backup. Uh, <laughs> We've been through that. Falk, Falk, Falk. I don't even know his real we name. We still don't know his name. <laughs> I, I just hate him, and I wish he never played football in his life. Do you like That's or mean, interceptions or touchdowns? But I really mean serious? this. Maybe like spilled your milk or something when you, you know, you hate him for that. Is that the secret behind this? Some bad choice. You know what? Your Patriots are going to suck. That's all i got to say to you. <laughs> and you have Andy Dalton. Yeah, you, you know. have the Jets. The Red Rifle's back <laughs> home. <laughs> the what? His nickname's The Red Rifle. Andy Dalton? But he changed yeah. his hair color. His nickname is still The Red Rifle. But he changed his hair color. That doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's not wearing red anymore, though. But is it the red fine. AK for you? No. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. He still, he still has red hair. I'm just talking shit. <laughs> Manny, I don't even understand. <laughs> I was actually kind of surprised. I was like, why does he know his hair color? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> but I, I didn't saw, question it. <laughs> I saw a post on Facebook. Somebody posted that Andy Dalton changed his hair color to blue to match his team colors. Because <laughs> 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 so it was orange for the Bengals. <laughs> yeah. Blue hilarious. rifle. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That would have been hilarious. Actually, yeah. I would have been like, oh, okay. I mean, he but, could get away with like platinum blonde if he played that role. But talking about that, so, like, what do you think? Because uh, there's been a lot of speculation when it comes to Dak holding out, saying that he's not going to play until they get his contract situation right. And now that the Cowboys signed Andy Dalton, there's a lot of pissed off Cowboys fans saying, oh, why did we pay Andy Dalton before we paid Dak Prescott? Which is kind of an idiot statement to make in my in my mind. since decent. They didn't pay him anywhere near what Dak is asking for. If Three they paid yeah. him what Dak was asking for, then, yeah, I would understand your frustration. But he has a contract that guarantees him $3 million. Three. And he gets up to $7 million, and that's with incentives. And those incentives require him to play. So if he doesn't play, he's not going to get that money. Um, so, like, what, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? I don't think it's a it's like a... Like a deal breaker situation where they're like, "Oh, we're gonna move on without you," uh, by signing yeah, Andy Dalton. I he is a veteran quarterback and he did do a lot of great things uh, in past years. Uh, maybe not in the recent years and such, but I think it's more of an insurance policy, as we didn't have any good backup quarterbacks for a long time. Uh, Cooper Rush was just waived. Brandon Whedon, Brandon Whedon gone. Like they, we didn't have a lot of great options, and. It was, it was rough for a while, and it's like, okay, well, what if Dak doesn't play? Our backup is Cooper Rush, and he's not going to be able to handle the workload. So we need some kind of insurance policy, and I think that Andy Dalton is the insurance policy for the one year. And hypothetically, if he does really well in that one year, if he plays and Dak holds out, then we can start to look at, okay, well who should be the starting quarterback of the Cowboys. But right now, I think it's just a, hey, we need somebody, a veteran, to come in just in case it doesn't work out with Dak. I think that if Dak holds out, he's going to lose a lot of respect from his fans. I think it's a bad move publicity-wise on his part. I get what he's doing. It's not about the money from what I understand. It's about the years that he's having issues with the contracts about. And... That gives me a little more comfort knowing that it's not about the money. It's about, like, longevity. He wants to play for the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. He just doesn't want to play for three years and go to another team. He wants to be there for a long time. Respect. You know, so that's that's respectable in that sense. But if that is the actual case and the years is the issue with the contract, then there's no need for you to hold out. Play the game. Play it. And if he gets hurt which I don't see happening, then we got Andy Dolan. You know, wouldn't be a bad option for a backup, but that's my take. I agree. It's definitely an assurance policy. Andy Dolan has proved to, like, help a team be, like, you know, make it to the playoffs with the Bengals for, like, how many straight years was it? I don't remember. 
then all of a sudden the Bengals went downhill. Mm -hmm. So now he's a backup. Yeah, I think he won a division a couple times. But he's he's a good backup. He'd be a great backup and Patriots didn't pick him up. <laughs> I think the the problem with the Dak situation is I like, even if it comes down to years, which I don't know, I mean you you probably know. I assumed that he was asking for the amount of money that he was asking for in the years weren't matching up to what the Cowboys wanted, so they wanted to offer him uh, less years with more money, and he probably turned that down because, like you said, he wants to stay with the team long term. I mean, the kid's young. He just got done with his rookie contract, yet he doesn't... It's It makes sense why he would want that big contract right now because with football, you never know when your career is going to be over. So if he's looking for that long-term contract right now, that's great. But I would take... I mean, personally, I would take less years and more money that way I can find out because at the end of that contract if the team still sucks but you're still putting up good numbers bring your talent somewhere else and go chase after that ring mm -hmm. give yourself opportunities because you're he's about to go into his prime years and once he passes that the it's all downhill in the NFL mm -hmm. I mean players don't play into their mid 30s anymore they get to the 30s, 33, 34, and they're done. So, I unless mean, you're Tom Brady. Unless you're Tom Brady. <laughs> Fucking Tom Brady. <laughs> My guy. Yeah. Well, I mean, Sadness. I, I agree <laughs> in the sense that he should, you know, he should play now, and he should take the contract that he should, you know, um, get what he can, you know, and play his mind out because if you want a big contract realistically you need to play 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 now and you'll get your big contract in the later years because if you have a long contract that's pretty big and you don't put up the numbers and you don't do well but you're you got that long contract like you might still get traded and someone will pick up you know the rest of your contract uh, and so ultimately you won't end up on the team like you got to play your mind off tony romo didn't get his big contract until way later in his career you know, yeah. I mean, a lot of these athletes need to realize there is no loyalty in professional sports. It's still a business. It's one hundred percent a business, and these guys would sell you the second they got a really good offer, and they wouldn't think twice about it. If it was a magnificent offer, they would trade you. Is he a caliber quarterback of Tom Brady? I don't person. I don't personally think so. Him. He left too. <laughs> but Tom Brady left on his own terms. I'm sure the Patriots got offers after offers after offers all the time for Tom Brady. But mm -hmm. did they trade him? No, because the type of caliber quarterback he was and how many championships he helped them win, it doesn't make sense to trade him. Yeah, even yeah. if somebody gave you their all of their draft picks for the next three years. And they tried to keep him. And but it doesn't make sense. And it was on Tom Brady's terms. Yeah. And Tom Brady decided to leave on his own terms. So that's completely different. I'm not saying Dak's a bad quarterback, because I don't think he's a bad quarterback. I just like to say that to Sal because I know it pisses him off. Uh, Dak's not a great quarterback. He's a good quarterback. He's a consistent quarterback. But he doesn't have that finishing factor that a lot of quarterbacks like Aaron Rodgers, Ben Roethlisberger, Tom Brady have, um, Russell Wilson. Those guys can help you close games. Um, and I think that's what Dak Prescott is missing. Because if you notice in the games they, they, they lose, if they're losing by really bad, the analysts have already looked into this and they say that Dak's numbers are so high because he does a lot of his production in the garbage minutes of games when the defense on the other side has already relaxed. You got to play catch-up and you bench yeah. some of your players. Yeah, so it's like it's like whatever at that point. Even if they score two touchdowns on us, they're not going to win. And they've been in some bad situations like that. But he's been consistent enough for them that he does deserve to get paid. What he's asking for, honestly, I, I, I personally wouldn't pay him that. Because I don't think he's worth that much money. But that's what he's asking for. He feels that he deserves it. He 
I feel like the biggest problem with this is he is basing this off of what money Carson Wentz has received and what money Derek Carr has received. When Derek Carr and Carson and Carson Wentz received that big contract, they were one of the top elite quarterbacks in the league. And then they both got injured, and they haven't been the same since. Mm -hmm. That was just an unfortunate so, circumstance. So, and sure both is. of them were driving huge seasons until they got hurt. Because the year that Derek Carr got hurt, the Raiders had only lost two games that year. I thought they were going all the way. I thought they were going all the way, too. The year that Carson Wentz got hurt, they won the Super Bowl. Nick Foles, what up? <laughs> big, big oh, Nick. Don't even. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, leaves and puts up the suck, comes back, comes back, Super Bowl leaves and then gets hurt. And yeah, so like they were, they were, they were, they were showing phenomenal numbers. Dak, Dak Prescott showing good numbers, but he's not, he's not turning anybody's necks at this point. He's not showing that the Cowboys are officially back because his first year with the Cowboys. There was a lot of promise there. Yeah, I'll give you that. There was really, really what, really fifteen, good. or was it? There was a lot of promise there. So, in I the second year, yeah. he he did good, but I did I did start to see some of those inconsistencies that uh, Shannon Sharp lo loves to bring up. Um, and then this past year, mm. I he deserves blame, but I also want to put a lot of blame on the offensive coordinator because they have. Probably, arguably, the best running back in the league. And they don't run the ball. And they don't run the ball. Like, and the problem I'm is the ball. They, they pass the ball early, they get behind in games, and when you're behind, you don't run the ball, you throw the ball. Why don't you run the ball early, get get into a rhythm, and, and then at the end of the game, if you're running in the beginning and you're still falling behind, then maybe it's time to get a new offensive you know, coordinator. They, they say that the... When when they are running the ball and consistently giving it to Zeke, like I think it's more than a certain there's a certain amount of touches per game. But when they give him the ball, they win games and they do really well. Zeke's you know, a really good running back because he's one really of the good best player. running backs in the game right, right now. When they feed him the ball every single time, like when there's a certain amount of carries or above. For a while, they were, they were winning all their games after they were giving him the ball. But the games that they were losing, and losing pretty bad, too, were when they weren't giving him the ball. Like <laughs> That's why he's been frustrated. Too predictable. Defenses, they just know. Like, oh, they're going to pass it. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. come on, man. Kellen Moore, like... <laughs> Kellen Moore. I hope, you, I hope you change with Mike McCarthy under you, man. I mean, there's some concerns because Mike McCarthy loves to pass the ball, like when he was on the, on the Packers. Uh, but yeah, that's because you had a guy you like Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers. You also had Aaron Rodgers, and you didn't have a lot of great running backs. Like you had Eddie Lacy. And but Eddie Lacy wasn't bad. He like, wasn't bad, but and then he just you, got you got big. Zeke. <laughs> so like you got Zeke. <laughs> yeah, then you got Zeke. So no excuse. Like run the ball. Especially while he's in his prime. You go play action, <laughs> and then you just go up. Yes. There's definitely a lot of a lot of opportunity with the Cowboys because if Dak decided not to play, I don't see the Cowboys doing that bad because you got to understand uh, Andy Dalton did good with a mediocre team. He bought a mediocre team that hasn't had any real weapons or any. Yeah, AJ Green. Any cr <laughs> any crazy um, Pro Bowl picks for linemen that I've heard of, at least. If you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Well, that's true, Maya. <laughs> but the Cowboys probably have one of the best, but not the best, uh, line, offensive lines in the NFL. So if, if Andy Dalton gets protected, he can be very accurate and very smart with his passes. I think that that's one big thing that Tom Brady's had his entire career that he's been able to do. And on top of that, he's just a genius when it comes to reading defenses. Oh, yeah. Well, even, that, too, like that, how he moves in the pocket. Yeah, that guy can just oh, dissect geez. defenses like it's nothing. Mm -hmm. He knows it before his coaches know it. But that, that all comes with studying tape. And yeah, Tom Brady was always been good at that. That's why but, yeah, I mean, I think you guys are in a good place. Yeah, you want to get Dak signed. I think Dex asking for too much money. I think Jerry Jones is being stubborn because he wants to be the winner in this scenario. 
he wants to say that he's the one that called the shots and he got it done. But unfortunately, you're dealing with two individuals that are hard-headed and they're probably going to make this process drag out very difficult. I think at some point, they're going to sign something. Like, before the season. This is this has got to be, like, uh, Either that the most they promising French. year that they have because they have they have a great receiving core. You know, they, they picked up CeeDee Lamb, and he's probably going to be the number one guy, and Amari Cooper is probably not going to stay in the long term even though he wants to, unless he takes a huge pay cut. But there's no way in the future that's a concern with CeeDee Lamb that they'll be able to keep both of them. Because if CeeDee Lamb goes off after his rookie contract's over, they're... He's going to ask for money, and he might get traded away. Yeah, but you got to look at it this way. C.D. Lamb's contract, the rookie contract is going to be four years. So you got to go four years before you actually have to pay him. Well, I'm even thinking if he goes four off. years. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but your team is in a position to win now. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm saying we need, like, we're, our most promising year is right now because we have C.D. Lamb, we have Amari Cooper, we have Michael Gallup, Zeke, Tony Pollard, um, Blake Jarwin's not too bad as a tight end. He's still young. He's got promise. Uh, we have still a arguably great offensive line, not the best, but a great one, and uh, like a not elite, but a good enough quarterback. We can make it happen. We finally got a kicker that can actually make field goals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was rough. That was rough. After Dan Bailey left, freaking Jets haven't That's... had a good kicker in years. <laughs> After Simo Goskowski got injured, we don't know what we're doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think, think we are doing Nick Folk still, unless they make Justin this guy, uh, you know, he's a punter. Uh, White know. supremacist guy. White supremacist. <laughs> hey, remember that quarterback Lamar Jackson that was in the draft? Yeah, did he get drafted by a team? He did, he went undrafted, but the Jets picked him up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Hey, you guys got Lamar Jackson. <laughs> There's a guy named Lamar Jackson. <laughs> yeah, he, he was, was a corner, back. He was a cornerback. <laughs> in the draft, and he never got drafted. The Jets <laughs> the picked Jets. him up. I was just like, the wrong would be funny Lamar if the Jackson. Ravens picked up Lamar Jackson? Yeah, we I were talking about that Jackson. during the draft. <laughs> hey, Lamar, are you cool if we draft Lamar? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not going to be confusing, right? All right, cool. <laughs> Lamar, get out there. Which one? <laughs> the quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they sent out the, the rookie out to play quarterback. <laughs> Oops, wrong guy. <laughs> Did you guys take a look to see who what... Uh, what players your team signed that went undrafted? Um, we didn't really do too, too much from what I saw. Let's so, see. let's see. On the 26th of April, un, uh, signed un, undrafted free agents. You signed a running back. I can't even pronounce that name. Holy crap. Suwu? Suwu? Suwu Olonilua. <laughs> tight end, offensive try. tackle, D end. <laughs> Kareem Abdur. D end. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. The Forest Buck. Three D ends. <laughs> what? You, you signed three undrafted D ends. Rondell. Oh, we need, we need to <laughs> Look at how his name is spelled. Rondell. <laughs> how is it spelled? Ron apostrophe Dell. Like the computer. Rondell Carter. <laughs> Garrett. Why is there apostrophe in the <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> Ladarius Hamilton. Edge. The radar superstar. Azur Kamara. I wonder if he's related to Alvin. Is it spelled the same? Potentially. Edge? No, Kamara. Oh, yeah, I think so. K A M A R A. <laughs> R J C. <laughs> what was it? West, East versus West? <laughs> C J R J M J. <laughs> yeah, I just know that the Patriots, uh, for their undrafted, they, got, yeah, they picked up some quarterbacks. Well, let's see. Yeah, let's, see. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Yeah. yeah, you guys definitely need yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. Jerry fucking Stidham! Jerry <laughs> fucking Stidham! Uh, Sign an undrafted free, free agent quarterback. Brian. Brian Ludlum. What? What? <laughs> Lewerk. <laughs> J- Jamar. Jamar, yeah. Jamar Smith. Jamar J Smith. apostrophe. Yep. <laughs> AMA. Running back, JJ Tyler. <laughs> J- Wide receiver, J- Will J- 
Hass, Hastings? Hastings. Hastings. Wide receiver Sean Riley. He's probably white. <laughs> <laughs> wide receiver Jeff Thomas. Wide receiver Isaiah uh, Zuber. Totally joking. <laughs> Hey, look! You, you Bill Murray. A, Bill, you signed a D tackle. Yeah, Bill Murray. <laughs> I saw that. I, thought, I remember that actually. No way! <laughs> I got that notification. I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> <laughs> Miles Bryant. I wonder if he's related to Des Bryant. Damn it! Des you guys Bryant. also signed some free agents on the thirtieth. Let's see. Marquise Lee. Yeah, we signed Marquise receiver. Lee. Yeah. Yeah, the Jaguars. Brian Hoyer. Hey, you guys. <laughs> Brian Hoyer. You guys signed Again. the old uh, linebacker that the Jets had last year. Brandon Copeland. Brandon Copeland. Who you were trash. like, I want to get rid of him so bad. Mm -hmm. Maybe Belichick might find something. Well, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> and you also signed Brian Hoyer. For like yeah. the fourth time. <laughs> <laughs> he just keeps coming just keeps back. Keeps coming back. Keeps coming back, man. Doesn't right now on your roster, it's uh, Jared Stenham and Jared Brian Hoyer. Brian Hoyer. <laughs> What you gonna do, brother? <laughs> How come I've you gonna never do? heard of this guy? Jared, fuck, Stidham? Because you gotta watch the preseason to know who he is. Yeah, man. <laughs> that's all, that's how I know him from the preseason last year. So he's only been in the league for one year. Yeah. He had a pretty good preseason. Really? Because he threw for 14 yards, zero touchdowns, and one interception with a this QBR of .1. The preseason. He's talking about the preseason. That's the only thing we have to base him off. <laughs> exactly. The this is the preseason, so you cannot say that he's bad. They don't have his stats on the preseason? Uh, yeah. That is his stats for the preseason. Yeah. <laughs> that can't be his only ones. He had a better game. He had a point one QBR yeah, against the Redskins. He threw three passes for two yards against my Jets for 14 yards. And we threw an interception to us. Dude, that's your guy. <laughs> that's your <laughs> guy. I'm sure he had a better game against the Giants. Or it was one of those games. He only played against the Tennessee Titans, my Jets twice, and uh, the Washington Redskins. During the preseason? Uh, no, no, that's not this true. Was, this says the AFC wildcard playoffs. But he played against the Titans in the wildcard playoffs? That makes no On sense January 4th? Get that. Get no, he didn't because he has no stats. Yeah, so I'm saying this is the body of work that they have for him. That's weird. So hold on. See all recent games. Yeah, that's it. No. So his recents are playing against in the regular season versus the Jets, the Washington Redskins, and the Jets. Where he had this is the regular season. Negative two yards, so he probably kneeled it. Kneeled <laughs> it or got the sacked. The regular season. Mm hmm Well, he didn't get sacked because it would have been... It was a sack right there. That's true. So he just he didn't he kneeled it. Yeah. Of course he's not gonna. This is your guy, bro. That's your guy, man. <laughs> this is the regular. That's your professional season. kneeler. <laughs> <laughs> such a good kneeler. Such oh, a good kneeler, such man. A good kneeler. So you should really see him kneel. <laughs> I can't wait to see him. Kneel. That should be the he should play of the game. game. Should be kneel. <laughs> Jared Neal steal him. <laughs> that's a weird way to. That's, it just doesn't flow. No, it doesn't. Jared Neal steal. No. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work. No. It doesn't work. Nope. That's why it's Jared fucking still. <laughs> Jared fucking still. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's it for the NFL, guys. So, I would say so. Yeah. You guys were wanting to talk about our next topic of conversation, The Last Dance. Such a good documentary. Such a good documentary, Such a good documentary. right now. I'm learning a lot because I didn't grow up. and You didn't grow up? Yeah, I didn't grow up. Did yeah, I didn't yeah. grow up in the nineties <laughs> watching being able to watch the Bulls and You're all that. Born in ninety six. Born in ninety six, the year when they went uh seventy two and ten, I think that was that year. Some absurd and I, so I didn't get to grow up with that. I knew like as I was like a kid I knew who he was, but I obviously I'm a kid, I don't really know what exactly. But Watching the documentary, I'm learning a lot of, like, what happened behind the scenes, which is really, like, there was a lot going on behind the scenes. Which is what we talked about in the last podcast, that he was worried about being looked at as a villain. Yeah, so, like, before the documentary came out, um, Michael Jordan said that uh, it's going to make it seem like he's being put out to be look like a villain. And I'm not getting that in the last... Uh, 
four episodes that I watched. Episode uh, five and six came out uh, this past Sunday. Today is Monday, and I haven't seen it. Monday, Not Monday. Monday. Um, I'm going to watch it tomorrow. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. but, Monday, Monday. but yeah, Monday. I mean, so far, so far you get to see the early struggles of Michael Jordan. He got drafted to a Bulls team where the head coach essentially said, Mike, take control of the game and you Doug win Collins. us the game. He used to be head coach for Sixers. <laughs> and he, you know what? That worked for a little while, but doing just that wasn't getting them past the Pistons. It wasn't getting them past the Celtics or uh, anybody else. Uh, that's why they got rid of Doug Collins. So they got rid of Doug Collins and they promoted uh, Phil Jackson. And Phil Jackson, with uh, some other guy, introduced the triangle offense, which kept the ball moving, which essentially took the ball out of Michael's hands he didn't like a lot that more. He did first. not like he that not. at all. He was very against it. And you know what? It ended up working out because they, got, they did really well. You get to learn about Scottie Pippen and how Scottie Pippen – uh, came to rise, you know, he was a very promising prospect going into the but draft. But thing was the contract. Yeah, you know, he got screwed on his contract. Yeah, he did. And, but he needed the money, and he didn't want to wager on himself uh, by getting hurt or something. So, I mean, he, t- he took a big risk, and the risk was not in his favor. If anything, he did... He gave the Bulls a huge discount. He deserved to be one of the highest paid players. And it is what it is. And then you find out about Dennis Rodman and how he worked. Dennis Rodman already, when he went to the Bulls, he had already won a ring. So he was already an NBA champion with the uh, Bad, Boy Bad Boy Pistons. And then you get, like, he, they also show like that time where he almost killed himself. As well, yep. which was intense. Yeah, I didn't know about that. Where you know they found him in his car with a shotgun, and I actually knew about that because of Mike Kers- uh, Kersem- Kersimbo and never Mike Kersimbo. Yeah, because he did a video. But yeah, they showed the backstory of all those. Like even Phil Jackson. Like I didn't even know he was like really big in the Native American stuff and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was that, like, was, that was a little different for me yeah. to, to for me to find out. I mean, Phil Jackson. I have such sour taste in my mouth as a Knicks fan with Phil Jackson, <laughs> what, he, what he did with my franchise. Uh, but obviously what he did with the Bulls and the Lakers solidifies him as one of the best. And I mean, yes, as an executive, he was probably really awful for the Knicks, but he won two championships with the Knicks. Yeah, as a player, yeah. So he's the only reason we have banners. Hmm. Just not and as a executive. Executive. He was a bad executive. <laughs> but we can't be good Fuck at everything. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> but you find the out co- the competitive nature of Michael Jordan, how extremely skilled he was. He, he just he just looked amazing out there. He was just so dominant in an era of where I feel like so a lot of people are gonna probably gonna disagree with me with the, uh, disagree with me on this, but I feel like Michael Jordan in this era would be not as big of a fish as he was back then. Well, his talent is a lot better now than it was back then. Correct, and that's the reason why I say that mm-hmm. because there's a lot more talented players that did the stuff that Michael Jordan could do. Now, uh. Michael Jordan, like, his accuracy was just ridiculous. He he was just ahead of his time with all the players that were there. There was a lot of great talent on his team, but he was one of the only guys that could really take over games. And that would be that would be his big thing in this era. He would be able to take over games because he would not back down from a challenge. Mm-hmm. Imagine Joel Embiid trying to D up. On Michael Jordan. Imagine Kawhi Leonard trying to deal up on Michael Jordan. I feel like Mike would still drop like 40, 50 points. And defenses are a lot lighter now. Yeah. Especially because they can't they can't touch you as much like they did back then. They were able to hand check and everything back then. Yeah. I mean, watching the documentary, you get to see the beating that Michael Jordan took 
against the bad boy Pistons. Like, they were literally clotheslining him and punching him in the back of the head. And, and the referees the weren't calling nothing. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to backtrack a little bit because you said that um, he, if he would still be really good now, today, but a lot of players are doing really well today. But would you say, opinion-wise, both of you guys, would you say that let, even though a lot of the players are really good today and seen what he has done, let's say Michael Jordan was not playing back in the day. Like, do you think that he like started a foundation of players today who like in, were inspired and looked at Michael Jordan as a role model as a player and the reason why they're really good is because they're motivated by the work that he put in and the talent that he had so they aspired to be like him? 100%. 100, yeah, 100%. 100%. percent Look at Kobe. Mm-hmm. Like, Kobe looked up to Michael and was probably the closest thing to Michael. Like, he, Kobe was his own thing, but, like... Mm-hmm. A smaller guy. But like he was that. very, like, the, probably the closest to ever be, like, to Michael. And, you can look, like, LeBron looked up to Michael. Like, every, like, all the people in, like, during that, like, time and even up to today looked up to Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm. So, because he was one of the greatest of all time. Oh, absolutely. It's like, if imagine not the, the greatest of all time. Imagine the way the game is played right now had he not been, mm-hmm. had he not played at all, you know? If he never played. Like, would do you think it would be different? Be as good as it is now? Or would it be slightly, you know... I think the NBA wouldn't be as big today if it wasn't for Michael Jordan. They show even... Like, I, I did catch a clip glimpse of, like, the last night's episode. And they were talking about how popular he was getting during, like, the 93 season. And how it was overwhelming him. And, like, he was so big. Mm-hmm. And people, like, cratered to him because he was just... He was the best guy, best guy in the NBA. So, it's it's hard to say because he, I can't really. There was a lot of other great players during that time. Oh yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. But Michael Jordan is on his own plateau. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you can name all these great players, but they weren't dominant like Michael Jordan was. Hundred percent. Because, like, a lot of people would say, well, Larry Bird was great. Larry Bird was a great offensive player. He wasn't very good on defense, but he made up for it on his uh, offense by scoring a lot and scoring at will. Uh, then you got... Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson was great. He's probably the best point guard of all time based off of what the point guard position is supposed to be. Because a lot of people are like, well, you know, Steph Curry should be the best point guard of all time. I think Steph Curry is the best offensive point guard of all time. That that could be up for debate. He scores. Definitely the best three points of all time. That's what he is. He's a scorer. He he doesn't really facilitate. He doesn't really facilitate, which is something that Magic Johnson did very well. Magic Johnson put up points, but he didn't put up points like pouring points. He just, he got his buckets in here and there. And he assists. But he's f- facilitated for his team. You know who doesn't In-game get a lot of credit? Manager. <laughs> you know who doesn't get a lot of credit? Who doesn't get talked about enough, in my opinion? Who? Uh, John Stockton. Oh, he was great. You taught jazz. <laughs> John Stockton has a record that will never be uh, taken. It's his assist record? His assist record will never be taken. Never. Mm-hmm. He has so many assists because he was such a great facilitator. Because back then, when he was a point guard, the point guard position was a facilitator. Yes. Wasn't meant to be a dominant scorer. Where now, anybody that comes into the league wants to be a dominant scorer. And, you know, if you're good at defense, players that are not good at scoring the ball concentrate on defense. Players that are good at scoring the ball lack in defense. Nowadays. So it's very hard, hard for us to ever see. Um, I doubt it that we'll ever see it again. And the only player that's really come close to being a uh, league MVP and defensive player of the year is Giannis Antetokounmpo. Because he's just a freak. Yeah, it's <laughs> Greek freak. freak. <laughs> the Greek freak. The Greek freak. Um, <laughs> 
Because that guy plays defense, he's swatting balls left and right, and he can score at will. And I really could have been uh, MVP again. I think he should have been MVP again. Who got MVP? Giannis Antetokounmpo. Oh. He won MVP last year. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were saying, oh, James Harden should have won it, but all James Harden was doing was scoring. I think the closest person that, other than Giannis that should have won was LeBron. Yeah. Well, in my opinion, LeBron should win it every single year because the numbers that he puts up are too consistent and just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. This guy nearly averages a triple-double every year. Mm -hmm. Every year. The only person that's been able to do it consistently is uh, Russell Westbrook, but it's downplayed by the fact that his teams aren't winning. And now he's with James Harden, so James Harden also has the ball. So <laughs> Yeah, but then, but then like, yeah. while the season was still going on, there was a lot of talk where, like, people feel more now like Russell Westbrook is the key player of that team now than James Harden, which I don't agree with because mm -hmm. James, that, that's James Harden's team. Yeah. He's been on the Rockets a lot longer, and he's won MVP on the Rockets, and he's still... Hell of a scorer. Yeah. He just... He just... He's not the f facilitator anymore, so he doesn't mm -hmm. have the ball in his hand all the time. Yeah. Mm. That's... That. Speaking of LeBron James, he teased the new logo for Space Jam. Yes, he did. And I'm actually really excited to see, because I... <laughs> I do like Space Jam. As a kid. As a kid, yeah. I, Space Jam. I, I love Space Jam. <laughs> I mean, that was announced a long time ago, and they just, like... Do another thing. They, he recently just posted a picture on his Instagram. Oh, that's it. Of teasing, I mean, like, nothing crazy. Like nothing crazy. It was just like yeah, a hat. he was wearing a yeah, he was wearing a hat, and so it confirms that Space Jam Two is the thing. Hmm. Well, well, yeah, basically confirms. Yeah. He didn't actually say it was the thing. He was just kind of posting the picture. <laughs> Interesting. I'm like, oh my god, they're actually doing. He's pulling it up right now. Rap now. Oh, come on. Space Jam. It's backwards. <laughs> a new league, I think. Yeah, that's what it says. So that'll be interesting. Cause it says 2021. Interesting. interesting. Freaking Steph Curry. That's dope. Congrats. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Corey, talks. man. Because <laughs> that's how he talks. <laughs> Do you know that uh, that meme, Manny? It was just like everyone's just like, Look at Curry. It's an <laughs> <like> inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He'll do anything, and everyone <laughs> just be like, "Just look at Curry." Just look at <laughs> Seth, Cur Seth Curry recently said that he uh, he thinks he could drop fifty points on any team. Put your money where your mouth is, bruh. As much as I love Seth and Curry, that you're, you're trying to get people on you on that. Mm. He's only saying that because the league's not happening right now. He probably is, but I think Steph Curry's that. well behind his uh, his uh, Prime. dominant years. Yeah. <laughs> I think he can. He's still a great player, but he's yeah. He's got to shoot his minds out. If yeah. that's serious, like all those three just, pointers. He, I mm. feel like I don't know how, but I feel like he's lost his touch. He's not. He got hurt. He's not consistent. He's not consistent. No, but even last year when he wasn't hurt, he he just he wasn't shooting. His shooting numbers were were down. Like compared to his MVP season. Yeah, consistent consistency is what I'm talking about. Not points. But percentage wise, I did blame part of that during that season because when they brought Kevin Durant, is when it all started, and like he uh, kind of was like, I don't know what I'm doing now because you got one of the best scores like in Kevin Durant on that team. But yeah, his... but Steph Curry never mind passing the ball. No, because he he's like I'd rather win championships than be the leading scorer of the of the squad. <laughs> and respect. That's why his. It went down, but he has also decreased like a little bit. But we'll just have to see. We weren't able to see because he got injured, and then mm -hmm. Corona, <laughs> and then the Corona, the Corona, Corona time. Oh yeah! I Hello. picked him up on my fantasy as my first round pick. <laughs> and <There> then <laughs> go and figure. Then the league ended, and then he got injured, <laughs> and then my team was trash. Hmm. Yeah, he came, he came back and he played like four games and then the league got shut down. And then it got shut down. Like, go figure. <laughs> My luck is terrible. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm right with you, man. <laughs> we have terrible. We have awful luck. 
But it would be a D'Angelo thing <laughs> for us. So, how about we talk some WWE? WWE. A. A. Is that a Drew McIntyre impression? It was an attempt. I don't think Scottish mm. people really go A. No, no, he went A. I don't a. think Scottish people really go A. <laughs> I didn't think he was doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying it was that bad. Got it. <laughs> Got it. But anyway. Anyway, uh, I like that Drew McIntyre, I'm on the topic of him, is rival Rivalry? Riv- rivalry. Riv- has a rivalry with... Seth Rollins, the Monday Night Messiah. The Monday Night Messiah. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's never not before. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Yeah, that's he played off. Sorry. That's better, hell of a lot better than Brock Lesnar and anything. Mm-hmm. So one hundred. Yeah, that's it's good. that would be a great matchup. Right here, Sal. Put the hashtag one hundred. <laughs> so I'm thinking too. That after this is all said and done, obviously I think Drew McIntyre is going to win that feud. Feuding. That was the word I was looking for. Feuding. After he wins that feud, I think he's going to start to feud with Jinder Mahal. Because he's back. He came back on Raw. And they're good buddies. They're good friends. And they used to be a tag team part, uh, tag team a long time ago. Yeah, and Jinder likes- Mahal used to be a champion. Vince likes big guys. But that's mainly because of Saudi Arabia. Right, and I honestly believe that that's going to be what is coming. Because of what Justin just said, the big reason Jinder Mahal got that big push is because it was that first year of Super Showdown, and they were trying to get in the good graces with Saudi Arabia by having a native be champion. We and start. that's personally why I don't think that the next few Drew McIntyre will get into will be with Jinder Mahal because WWE is not trying to please anybody in the Middle East right now. Yes. They, they really could give a crap about that right now. They're having a lot of trouble. But to brainstorm on who he's going to feud with next, that that's very much up in the air. I, mean, I, I honestly think, I think it because of storyline. I don't think it's because of... The um, I'm hoping that the creators and the the, the people. But I could yeah. see gender because, like you said, they were part of three MB, yeah, and he already got pushed up uh, to like a right. title contention. Right. So you could just use him again. He'd be like, I want the title back. Yeah. You know. So I could see that, but yeah, so I, like to the Saudi Arabia point, like they ever since that whole like airplane or whatever incident where like people <laughs> wrestlers um, couldn't take the flight back. Just, mm-hmm. Like they're not in good relations right now. Mm-hmm. Nope. But it doesn't mean that can't keep pushing um gender because you know they people still watch WWE over there. So they sure do. You keep they the sure do. Up. But again, I don't think that's the sole reason why they would have a feud. I think it'd be because of three and B and the the fact that Jinder Mahal used to be a contender and he he would play it off as I want it back. You know, I'm back in Raw. I used to be a champion. Let's do this. Or they become buddies and they become friends. Tag team champions of the world. Um, (laughs) That I don't see. Mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like even this feud's gonna go on for a while. They're gonna milk this for all all that it's worth. I hope so. And I'm I'm talking about the Seth Rollins Mm -hmm. and uh, Drew McIntyre feud, Um, because the only other person that I can see them throwing into the feud would be Roman Reigns. But Roman Reigns and WWE are not on good terms right now because of him pulling out of WrestleMania. He's yeah. on SmackDown, um, right? He's on SmackDown, too. Um, recently, what I found out was that... He's on any show right now. <laughs> I found out that one of the reasons why Roman Reigns pulled out is because he heard somebody in the locker room was sick and he didn't feel like it was a safe situation since him and his wife just found out they're having another set of twins. Oh, congratulations! Good Which job. is completely fair. Yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. I mean, f that noise. No, hundred. <laughs> f that <laughs> noise. <laughs> Not only does he have a, a daughter that you guys have probably seen in the commercials with him, but yeah, he has <laughs> one set of twins. But oh, now he's right. having a second, <laughs> a second set of twins. Man, that's crazy. Yeah. He's on the road majority 
365 days a that's year? A lot of twins. That's rare to have, like, two sets of twins. So, like, I don't know anyone that has, like, two sets of twins. <laughs> oh, that's rough. So, like, I don't think WWE, sh if that's what this whole thing is about, WWE should have no right to, like, be mad at Roman. Yeah, it's not, it's not fair to him. No. No, but you know how they are. Yeah. WWE has an agenda, and they stick to it. Um, the next person that I could Braun see... Braun Strowman's your champion now. <laughs> yeah, I mean... It wasn't the plan. Not a lot of people are happy that Braun Strowman's a champion because they said a lot of... Some people were saying that he, uh, he was past his time. And I think WWE did the perfect thing by starting a feud between him and Bray Wyatt. Old school. That's going to be... Get Bray the title back. That's probably what they're trying to do. Probably going to try to do that, but I'd still say let Braun Strowman beat the fuck out of him for a while. That'd be nice to watch. <laughs> I hate Bray Wyatt. I hate Bray Wyatt. You don't I like The Fiend? I like The Fiend, but I just hate Bray Wyatt. But the, you know, Firefly Funhouse, man. Stupid. Such but, a good match. But There's so many friends. The Firefly <laughs> Funhouse match was great. That was such a good it wasn't even a match. You have, you have AJ <laughs> Styles. Yeah, I'm thinking he might feud with Drew McIntyre at some point. Which is nine times Which would be great, because AJ is great at anything. He's also back, and he's, he's not also, a ghost. He's not a ghost. <laughs> he said he so. Dug himself. Himself out. He, du he dug himself out. He dug himself out. I'm not a ghost. <laughs> he had to say that. I know, right? I love AJ Styles. I'm not a ghost. The he's Undertaker like, is not taking my spotlight. He's, he's not even the, like, he's not the best on the mic, but he's just so funny. Oh, he's fantastic. On the mic, what I, are you talking about? I don't think he's the best on the mic sometimes, but he's like so <laughs> hilarious that it makes up for it. He's amazing on the mic, that's it's, why I love him so much. Did you just say AJ Styles is not good on the mic? He's not like the best on the mic. I'm not saying he's not good, but he's not the best on the mic. But well, he, the best his, on the mic is Chris Jericho, <laughs> in my opinion, yes, because Chris Jericho is my favorite wrestler, easily. But <laughs> yeah, AJ makes time. up definitely <laughs> makes up for it because he's so funny. What were we talking about he the other day? So, Manny, we were talking about, like... We were trying to think of... Stone Cold, The Rock, and, like, people... There will not be anybody who can touch, and Chris Jericho, that kind of mic skill. You know? Oh. Like, today's wrestlers do not have the same caliber mic skills as The Rock or Chris Jericho or, or, or Stone, Stone Cold. Or Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah. I used people to come close. Love, I used to love when Stone Cold Steve Austin was like, What? <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> What? And One beer. One. <laughs> two beers. Three beers. Yeah, do that to Cody for no while. Oh, <laughs> it's gonna kick your ass. Or like, what's your name? <laughs> it doesn't matter what your <laughs> name is. Ah <laughs> uh, man, that was so good. <laughs> jabroni beanie. <Bye. laughs> you have to sing like the the jabroni bull, like <laughs> um, Brahma Boulevard. Like, <laughs> can you smell? <laughs> it's such a good times. He was the rock was. Probably the greatest on the microphone. <laughs> he was just the way he could just captivate the audience. Like so good Stone Cold, so is Stone Cold too. Like both of them. <laughs> I mean him and, like, and Chris Jericho. Also, and Chris like, Jericho. They're like top three, probably. <laughs> I would say, yeah. arguably, top three. It's they're of great. all time in mm -hmm. all wrestling, like WCW, ECW, AEW. Like recently, I was watching like um, pops, like some of the greatest like. Pops in WWE history, and like a lot of them were in the Attitude area. 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 <laughs> Fail Friday. Area. Area. <laughs> yes, we got him. <laughs> We've, I finally made it. <laughs> but, um, but, um, when, um, I was watching some of them, and like they had like Stone Cold, they had The Rock, and like the Pops were crazy. Yeah. People, people jumped nuts. out of their seats and everything for like The Rock and Stone Cold. It, mm hmm. Yeah, it proves the point. Like they're one of the, their degrees on the mic. The pop was like when Edge came out in the Royal Rumble, but it was just like all the time. Yeah, but it's like every time they came out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So the Money in the Bank matches. I'm trying to look up the exact details, but from what I, what I got so far is that they're gonna be happening at the uh, WWE corporate building. That's here in Connecticut. Stanford. No, wait. Yeah. The, yeah. the corporate building, not the training facility? Yeah, it's happening in the corporate building. Yeah. Oh, in Sanford. Mm-hmm. Hmm. 
Uh, just go there, just drive there, and just be like, hey, I've driven past it plenty of times. <laughs> just no try problem. to get in. <laughs> I doubted that they're going to do it live. They're probably going to do it taped. Uh, yeah. taped. Oh, if they do it like the Firefly Funhouse match, like that'd be smart. <laughs> True. <laughs> be fantastic. That's probably what it's going to be like. I don't foresee it being too much of a wrestling match until like the end, like once they get up to the top. Because it seems like it's they have the ring up top with like the briefcase and the ladders and stuff That's like so that. Dangerous. But one, they have to chase up so i see that being more of like just like a chase and like a skit kind of in a, a way skit yeah or they just do like some ridiculous stuff you know working their way up so that would be you have women and men at the same, same time, time going up there so there's there two suitcases one for women one for men's or is it just one suitcase winner take all kind of thing because there's I think on be their promo there's two suitcases so it's probably gonna be two but i w- or i don't know that would be interesting if it was just one yeah, because it could be a woman having the money in the bank, mm-hmm. or a man, you know. Well, I guess we'll just have to see, because that's apparently the subject. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Well, I mean, we'll find out on Sunday. We'll figure it out. You know, because I'm sure we'll be doing a whole lot of nothing. It won't be like last year's, like when we went. <laughs> well, we were there last year. We were there. I hope Brock Lesnar doesn't show up. He better not. Fuck Brock Lesnar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So men's money in the bank. Daniel Bryan versus Aleister Black versus Rey Mysterio versus King Corbin versus Otis versus AJ Styles. Yes. Bryan was the first to punch his ticket to the spot in the money in the bank uh, field with a submission victory over Cesaro on April 17th. SmackDown on April 20th edition of Raw. There were three qualifying matches with Rey Mysterio defeating Murphy, Aleister Black defeating Austin Theory. Yep. Mm-hmm. And Apollo Crews advancing, defeating MVP. On 24th... <laughs> MVP? <laughs> so random. What? <laughs> on April 24th, Corbin defeated Drew Gulak to earn his way into the match. Otis defeated Dolph Ziggler on May, f- uh, Dolph May 1st. Dolph gets, like, his... What he is deserving of. <laughs> uh, so... What this isn't stating here is that Apollo Crew, Cruz. That's not, that's how you were to pronounce it, right? Apollo yeah, Cruz, yeah. Because it's not spelled that way. Um, he got hurt in a match, so AJ Styles entered a gauntlet as the last participant <laughs> and just won the match. He's not a ghost. And he's not a ghost. <laughs> he's not a ghost. And he's back. He just shows up with a mic. <laughs> And I love it. <laughs> love it. Yeah, that was great. So, all right. He, this year, there will be too. a unique twist added to two of the most anticipated matches of the year. The staple money in the bank matches will not be taking place inside of com- the confines of the WWE Performance Center. Rather, they will happen simultaneously at WWE headquarters, also known as Titan Towers in S- Stanford, yeah, Connecticut. Uh, Teen Titans. <laughs> it's a real thing. Apparently, that's Sanford. I'm gonna go be, meet Nightwing. <laughs> be the the next men's Nightwing. and women's Money in the Bank matches will begin on the ground floor of headquarters with the coveted coveted briefcase available for grabs on the rooftop. What's more, for another historical first, both men and women's Money in the Bank matches will be taking place at the same time. That makes no sense. Why? I mean, they're innovating right now because of the whole coronavirus thing, which I get. But that makes me think and believe that it is going to be more of a skit than it will be live, which is probably smarter considering it's gonna there's gonna be things going on in the roof. <laughs> Maybe they didn't want to like kind of ruin it by doing like two matches like inside the headquarters, mm-hmm. and they just wanted to make it one big thing. Mm-hmm. Too much going on. Yeah, or they wouldn't want to take away like, like one gender versus the other. Like one's in the training facility in Tampa, and the others in the corporate. Yeah, and if you like, if the men's is in the corporate and the females in the training facility, then they'd be like, well, why couldn't the females be in the corporate? You know, well, and then vice versa. You know, and then the men's and the females, and be like, why is the females over there? And they're getting all the spotlight. So they probably uh, like, you know, just throw them in there all at the same time. And I, I also see it as like, if you did them separately, but both in the headquarters. It could take away from, like, one of the matches. Because you've already seen it. And then you've yeah. got to watch it again. And it's just yeah. like, okay, that takes away from 
that match. Mm -hmm. So, so question for you guys: for the participants of the matches, like I said, so Dan uh, Daniel Bryan, Alistair Black, Rey Mysterio, King Corbin, Otis, and AJ Styles, and then you have Oscar, Sh Shayna Baszler, Baszler, Nia Jax, Dana Brooke, Lacey Evans, and Carmella. Who do you think is gonna help each other? Help each other? I thought you said he was gonna win. That's what I thought. Who's gonna help each other? Like in Yo, like... because you gotta you gotta realize since they're gonna happen at the same time, there's going to be some What's the Intergender? Word? No. No? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Alliances. Versions. Alliances. That's the word. That's the word that I was looking for, I'm sorry. Alliances are gonna be built to help each other win. Intergender. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking at the same time, there could be intergender <laughs> alliances. <laughs> like I could see, I could see Nia Jax and uh, King Corbin forming an alliance because they're considered to be dominant people. I hope Nia, Nia Jax, Jax doesn't wins. Win. I hope she doesn't. I could see her winning because she's back, so they could give her a push. You know, so I could see her winning. I, I hope she doesn't. After the after what they did with Shayna Blazer, Baszler, you never get her name right. I know, never. But it's because the the it's stupid. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> All right. That's how I really feel. <laughs> after how they pushed her so hard from coming right up from NXT, and then and then going to WrestleMania, like. Nia Jax is the perfect one to like put her in her place because she's not gonna do any of the stuff that she did in that elimination chamber match to Nia Jax. No, no, no. It'd it'd be just fun to watch them. I think with Nia Jax is like South scene with like big men. It's like she's a big woman. Do you just say Sal likes big men? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm. How I'm dare you? <laughs> I'm comparing how. Like, Sal thinks of the big, big, man. big men. <laughs> like, you know, when no. your problem with Braun Strowman was like, he's just a big man, and it's just like, there's... I like petite short girls. Like Alexa Bliss. <laughs> but, By yeah, TV. she's just... She's a big woman. <laughs> wow. I'm sad. It's true. And I don't think she's good on the mic. Well, I know what you're saying. And, you like, they've always had a dominant, like, female. Yeah. Nia Jax... Beth Phoenix, yeah, um, someone in between them that I can't remember. And she, the the it's very rough. <laughs> what was it? The glint? Not the glint. That's Beth Phoenix. The, Don't you um, tell it. <laughs> there was the one where she she's on AEW now. You know what I'm talking about? Awesome Kong. Oh yes, yes, yes. Awesome Kong. Oh, she went by a different name though when she was in WWE. Yeah, Karma, I think. Yeah, something like that. But yeah, it's sponsored just... by Macarons. Mm. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's that's just my personal preference. My personal preference is, you know, short not tea girls. <laughs> my personal preference. Like Alexa Bliss? Same. I like Sasha. <laughs> I think she's my favorite right now. <laughs> he got that jungle fever in him, boy. <laughs> or Zelina Vega. <laughs> hmm. Anyways, <laughs> do you guys have anything else you guys want to add? I think we made it past the the hour mark. We sure did. So I think it's a good place. Well, you got anyway, guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure to hit that notification bell so you can know whenever we upload new things. Forget this face and follow these faces. <laughs> He's gonna edit this out. Remember the person that's editing this. <laughs> it's got some, some out like twist our arm. <laughs> like, comment, follow, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff like Manny just said. And show us some love, give us a review, let us know what you think. And we would love to see what you guys be part of the are. conversation. Yes, please tweet us. Also, we tell want me, to talk. Tell me I'm stupid. I don't care. Yeah. 
A lot of people. I get told that every day. A lot of people will disagree with what Manny says. Is what he says in almost every podcast. A lot of people probably disagree with what I say. So disagree with him. Debate it. You know, he's a master debater. No, that's Simeon. He's a master debater. All right, at South Styles eighty seven on all of your favorite platforms. At Manny Beeson, all platforms except Twitter. At Manny Beeson underscore. At JD Angel underscore at Instagram and TikTok. Boom. Signing out. Keep it tight. Tight like a first time.